Today I'm going to share with you a very cool mixing technique. This one comes from Andrew Sheps and it's called the Rear Bus Parallel Compression Technique. And of course, I'm going to use Cubase. Hey, what's going on my friends? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Very excited to be back with a tutorial video for you. And this time we're going to talk about Andrew Sheps. If you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And again, for all of you, share and like this video if you think that the video is helpful. If you don't know who Andrew Sheps is, he's a Grammy Award recording mixing engineer and producer. He worked with artists such as Adele, Metallica, Red Hot Chili Peppers, U2, Green Day, Beyonce, just to name a few. And he has this very unique way of doing parallel compression for the whole mix, which is quite interesting and unique. And this is what I want to share with you. So let's jump in Cubase and I will explain to you what that technique is all about. Uh, so basically, if we go back in time when uh, Andrew uh, was mixing uh, on analog gear, because now Andrew does everything in the box, uh, all of his mixes are done using Pro Tools and plugins. He doesn't work with outboard gear anymore. But back in the day, uh, he worked with the Neve console, which has a rear bus, uh, a rear bus channel on the console. Because that the specific Neve board had the option to mix in quadraphonic. So the rear uh, channel was used for uh, the speakers you set up at the back of the uh, the control room. So that was already set up on his uh, Neve console and he actually used that uh, rear bus uh, channel to use it as a parallel compressor channel for the entire mix. And when he jumped into Pro Tools to mix entirely in the box, he brought that technique with him in Pro Tools. So let's uh, uh, check it out in Cubase and uh, let me show you, explain to you how that works. So the main idea is to have a stereo bus with a compressor as an insert that will be used to blend with the whole stereo mix. So what Andrew does in Pro Tools to set that up, he uses an aux channel, a stereo aux channel, to insert a compressor. And then all the channels that the output goes to the stereo bus, he, he actually sends, as a send a signal, he's gonna send those channels to that aux channel. And the output of that aux channel is gonna go in the stereo, the main stereo bus. So it's basically a parallel signal on everything that goes into the stereo bus. But the only exception to the rule are drums. He doesn't send the drums to that bus, okay? Uh, and this is made on purpose. So this is one of his basic rule um, as far as the rear bus technique goes. So let's check this out in Cubase. So we have here a stereo um, effects channel track that I called rear bus. Okay, this is the one right here. So the way my template is um, is set up, I have several stereo buses that are all going into a stereo bus, which is my main mix bus. Then that mix bus is uh, going into the master bus, the main master bus out of Cubase. And that channel, that main bus is only uh, only used for uh, reference plugins and that's it, you know? So all the main processing, the stereo bus processing, is done on the stereo out channel. So all of my mix buses, my instrument mix buses, are going into that stereo out channel. So I have one stereo bus for the drums, one for the bass, one for the guitars, one for the keys, one for the vocal. So those are my main buses. And all of my tracks are going into one of those channels. And then what I do in this case, if I want to apply the rear bus compression technique, I have my FX channel track that is set up right here and in which I have a compressor, which I'm gonna to talk to you about later on. And then I send post fader 
all those main channels to that rear bus channel. So my main output of those channels are still going into the stereo out, but also ascend to the rear bus, except for the drums. The mixed drum channel is not sent into uh, the rear bus, okay? Only the bass, guitars, keys, and vocal uh, bus uh, instrument channels. Um, and then, the output of that rear bus is going into the stereo, the main stereo uh, mix bus that I have right here. Now, if we look at the compressor that I'm gonna use, uh, this is, again, something very specific on the rear bus technique. What he likes to do is to work with a dual mono compressor. So what is a dual mono compressor? Okay, so, so why not stereo? Um, okay, let me explain to you what dual mono means. Uh, basically, if you look at a stereo track and you insert a plug-in like a compressor, that compressor in Cubase by default is gonna be a stereo compressor. So it's gonna, it's gonna be affected by the full stereo uh, field of the signal. But a dual mono compressor will keep the left and right side independent from each other. So the compressor is gonna react differently from what's going on uh, from the left side uh, compared to the right side of the stereo field. So uh, what that creates, it creates movement. Because you know the, the compressor is not affecting the entire the full stereo field equally. It goes according to what's happening on each side of the uh, of the stereo field. So we, it adds a bit of more movement. Quite nice. Um, and this is what Andrew loves to use uh, on his rear bus channel. So now uh, the problem we have in Cubase though is that we don't have dual mono channels. Okay, um, so. Uh, uh, plugins like UAD, uh, UAD plugins, and I know that Andrew loves to use uh, the 1176. Um, this one, the uh, the AE um, 1176, uh, which has a dual mono option using Pro Tools. Okay, but because Pro Tools supports dual mono uh, on their channel, so my option here, if I want to use a dual mono compressor, I have two options. My first option is to use a plugin that has dual mono integrated into the plugin itself. Like this one, the T-Rex Dynamu from IK Multimedia, this one has dual mono option within the plugin itself. And this is what I'm gonna use for this video. Uh, but if you wanna use a dual mono uh, parallel compression in Cubase, just stay tuned because on one of my next videos, I am gonna do a video specifically on that topic. So I'm gonna show you in that video how you can set up in Cubase a dual mono parallel compressor channel, okay, directly in Cubase. But for today, I'm gonna use the uh, T-Rex dual mono compressor um, for this tutorial. So let's have a quick listen to the mix without the rear bus, and then I'm gonna unmute the rear bus so you can hear the difference. Walking in the way many saints have gone before Now, with the rear bus active, the interaction between the vocal and the instruments um, is a bit more lively and has a bit more energy. Walking in the way, many saints have gone before. A holy road to travel on. Your joy fills my heart, strengthens me with hope to share. And declare the victory you won. Now, at this point, those are the basic rules. But, you know, even Andrew does some, some minor changes depending on the mix he's working on. So, for example, sometimes he's going to just remove the bass out of the rear bus. And this is what it's going to sound like. Walking in the way, many saints have gone before. Declare the victory you
So, you know, that works as well. Again, it depends on the mix. Um, and even sometimes Andrew's gonna add a bit of drums also, maybe not, um, not at full volume, but you know, just blend the drums a bit can also work depending on the mix um, you're working on. This is my take on it. I kind of like it and I think I'm gonna start using it on some mixes because um, I think it's quite cool. Now, I would say though, the best way to use this approach and this technique is to use it from the beginning of your mix. And this is something that also Andrew does on his side. He sets that up right away. It's part of his template. So the reason is very simple. If you add it at the end of the mix, like I did right here, there's maybe more adjustments that are gonna need to be done on the individual tracks. Because uh, if you apply this at the beginning of the mix, you're not gonna mix the same way afterwards. You're not gonna apply the same amount of compression on your individual tracks. So this is gonna influence the way you're gonna mix. So this is why for better results, it's always better to, to start your mix with that already in place and work that out as you go. So there you go. This is the rear bus technique from Andrew Sheps, but in Cubase. So if you enjoyed the video, share and like, and again, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments or um, other type of videos or other topics you would like me to cover on future videos, leave everything down below in the comment section. All right, my friends, I'm gonna wish you well, and until next time, take care and see you.